From the News Channel 5 Network, this is On The Line. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Open Line on Tuesday night. I am Ben Hall. We are going to learn, at least I'm going to learn something different tonight. We are going to be talking about gardening. Now, it is the summer and it is hot, but winter is coming. So what sort of things should we all be thinking about uh, when it comes to gardening? Free advice on those types of things. And we're very happy to have with us an expert in this arena, because it's certainly not me. Cindy Shapton, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you for having me, ben. I'm so glad you're here. You're a gardening consultant, um, written a book that we'll talk about and all of that. But all right, so here we are, very hot outside, summer's mm -hmm. ending. What should people be thinking about this time of year? Well, this time of year, you know, in August, we're all tired of we're all tired of gardening. It's hot, we're miserable. It's, right. You know, but the couple things to remember is don't let the weeds get ahead of us. So we got to get back out there and keep those weeds down. But after that, it's like this is the perfect time to plant. A lot of people think spring, but really it's fall. Fall is a great time to plant um, perennials, shrubs, trees, vegetables. There's all kinds of cool seeds crops you can plant so this is a time and and as we kind of talked about a little bit earlier you and I were talking is that this is the time um, when you know in the fall when the roots can develop if you plant them in the fall roots can develop all winter long you've got you know rains you've got cooler weather you don't have to be out there you know making sure you water everything really well and so na mother nature kind of does a lot of the work for you well you're right I would think again not being um, an expert in this arena I would think you plant in the spring but you're saying right now, yeah. right now is the time to plant. Yeah, the fall. Fall is a great time for planting. A lot of people, a lot of people think spring because we're all excited. We have spring fever. We can't wait. And a lot of times we plant before our last frost, and then we plant again. But we don't care because we're all enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> but and it is okay time to plant because you know you're out there. You want a garden, and and you have water, or maybe you have a watering system. It's great, but fall is just so much easier on the plants and such a better time to plant so especially here in middle Tennessee it's perfect what are some of the mistakes people make this time of year are, are there some mistakes that kind of stand out mistakes that can kind of happen anytime <laughs> we all make them <laughs> yes right right and hopefully we all learn from them <laughs> we make them and then we have something to talk about so <laughs> but um, I think sometimes you know people maybe um, one thing I see and I wouldn't call it a mistake but things I like to see I see people doing is they get a little anxious about cleaning up the garden the perennial beds and they cut down all the flower heads like of the echinaceas and the black-eyed Susans and really if you could just leave that and think about leaving those seed heads for the birds and the wildlife in the fall they really appreciate it so not really a mistake but just something a lot of times people don't think about they want to tidy their garden all up and and instead um, leave some of those blooms and leave some of the you know um, the some of the seed heads for even for winter interest and for texture and and so you're you know your garden has a natural beauty all winter that way now you brought some great stuff because I can smell yeah. it yeah. in this um, basket here yes so what what are some of the things you, you brought well what I did is I just went and took a little walk in the kitchen garden before I came and just thought well you know what is going on out there and a lot of people probably have basil and you probably like me been traveling a lot and on vacation and and all of a sudden you look at your basil and it looks like this and you have all these seed heads and a lot of people think well it's just too late to do anything with it but it's really not as long as these are still soft, you can still use them just like you would the leaves. You can use them in cooking and making pesto, and and um, and these are great to dry too. As long as they're still soft, you can dry these this time of year, and they make just lovely tea all winter long. So, what would you take out to make the tea? What do you, what do you do there? I would use any of these flowers or the leaves. Just smell that. Yeah, it smells great. But you would. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that smells so good. You would, yeah. you would just pick this off? I would just hang it upside down and dry it for now. Or you can make it fresh. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just stuff it in a tea and pot and put some hot water on it. It's not real scientific. It's not really <laughs> yeah. difficult. Okay. And yeah, then, it smells so good. Yeah, and you can dry some for winter. This is a time of, you know, you're, we're still preserving the garden. So this is a good thing. You can preserve it and, and use it all winter. So you can freeze the leaves. And the f and the soft flower heads, you can freeze them. So you can put that in the freezer. Absolutely. And now, what? And what happens then? It's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Just hanging in there with the other vegetables and things. And then what do you do? You you thaw it out and and. Well, actually, 
I'm sorry. I'll try well, to Well, good. No, it is frozen. Uh, I think you're so, right. So uh, really what you really want to do to freeze basil, any kind of basil, is pick the leaves off. That's really the best part. And what I've learned to do is take the little, um, like, pint size little... Um, you know, those little fr freezer bags, and I take them out to the garden, actually. And the first thing in the morning, I'll take a, a fine misting of the hose, and I'll wash them, and then I'll let the sun dry them off, and then I, I know I have all the bird poo and all that kind of stuff <laughs> off of them. Some people are real particular, I don't, you know. They want that off, yeah. Yeah, it's nature, but hey. Um, so, and then I just pick all the leaves off, and I just stuff them in a little, the smallest freezer bag I can get, and I just stuff them until they're full, and then I, you know, try to take out as much air as I can, label it, date it, and just throw it in the freezer, and then when you take it out, it's kind of like a little cake, and then when I can just pull it all out and chop off what I want and use it, or take the whole container and just throw it in my food processor and make pesto. So just a real easy thing. Another thing you can do is go ahead and this time of year, put them in a blender. Take all these leaves, and it, these seed heads are soft. You can use those too. Put them in a blender, and then pour them in maybe just a little bit of water. Pour them into ice cube trays. Remember those? Oh, ice yeah. Cube trays? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, second graders don't know what those are anymore. <laughs> no, <they> but, <laughs> <laughs> but I try to keep a couple around just for this. And then you have little frozen, you know, basil. Um, cubes, and then you can throw those into soups or stews or whatever you want all winter long. All right, now, all right, planting vegetables for fall and winter harvest. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that is. Yeah. In, so, what, what, what about that? It's a great time to do that. Um, there's a lot of things that love the cooler weather, um, things that we just, you know, you probably buy in the store for salads. You know, there's lettuces, uh, chard, Swiss chard, arugula, um, all the greens, kales. All those things that we all love for our smoothies now. Yeah, I love smoothies. I have smoothie every day. Yeah. Every so. day. So you just plant that. And people want to be self-sufficient now. They want yes. to plant this stuff, grow it, yes. you know, in their backyard, and they can do it. Yes. You can do it in containers as well. You can grow all kinds of greens, and they're pretty. Um, it's, it's not traditional, but you can add some pansies if you want to, because pansies are edible, the flowers. So you can add some pansies to your greens and, and, uh, and have a really beautiful container with some maybe bright light Swiss chard, which has really bright colored um, stems. And then you can just harvest from it. And the more you cut them, the more they come back. Now there's, what if there's somebody who's saying, I do not have a green thumb, I cannot I cannot grow anything. Anything I touch dies <laughs> when it comes to gardening. What what about that? I mean, you, you, you're bound to hear that. Yes. And, and do you think some people just have a knack and some people don't? No, absolutely not. I think it's practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think if you want to do something, just keep practicing. Um, you buy a packet of seeds, you get some nice, uh, you know, potting soil in a container, and you just start practicing. And you put your seeds in there, and you cover them lightly, pat them down, water them and let them grow. Um, you may have some, you know, uh, it's kind of trial and error sometimes, but I think when you have success, then you're encouraged to do more. I think you're right. And do more. So don't ever and you can't get discouraged. Big. Don't get discouraged. No, and if you have to, go buy some plants. A lot of the nurseries right now, the, the garden centers, they all have plants you can buy that are already growing and you just got to put them in the containers or put them in your garden. You don't have to grow everything from seed. It's easy to grow from seed, but you don't have to. So. You know. And organic, that's become such a big thing. Well, we all, wanna, we all want to have our veggies uh, pesticide-free. I mean, we don't want to eat it, right? And so we don't know what's on some things when you buy them in the store. You don't know where they come from or where they've been, what kind of handling, and they've been washed, but with what kind of water. And I mean, there's lots of questions, right? They come from a long ways, they're not so fresh. So, you know, a lot of people are beginning to really understand that it's not hard to grow some veggies in your backyard or in your garden this time of year. And so they're, people are really um, excited about doing it now. And so, um, and it's just really nice to have fresh, fresh. You want to make your smoothie, run out to the back porch and just grab some fresh kale. <laughs> <laughs> kale, I put that in my smoothie, absolutely. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, if you want to call and get free gardening advice, this <laughs> is your chance. Give us a call. There's a the number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. We will take a break. We'll be back right after this.